Hello my dear friends, I am Sujoy and I am back with a new series of tutorials for you where I am telling you how to do project management using network analysis. This is my sixth video in the series. In my previous five videos, I have explained the project management from the very basics, from the definitions to how to draw the network diagram. And today I will tell you how to draw the network diagram and how to optimize it using and not using the dummy activity. Sound confusing? Not at all. I will explain it. So let me start. So first, you are given a activity table from which we have to draw the network diagram. First, don't look at the network. I will tell you how to draw it. So here, two columns are there. The first column denotes the activities and the second column denotes the relative predecessor activities. The predecessor activity is an activity which must be completed before the actual activity can be started. For example, the activity A must be completed before the activity B can start. That is the meaning of predecessor activity. To know more about activities, event, predecessor activities, successor activities, please do watch my previous videos on project management. Link to them is given in the video description below. So for now, let us start with drawing a circle. A circle represents an event. Let us give it a number, number 1. So let's start with the activity A, which has no predecessor activity. That means it is the starting activity. So from event 1, the activity A will emerge. Activity is represented using arrows and the end of the activity is represented by another event. Let's say it's event 2. And next, activity B, which are the predecessor activity of A. That means it can be started after the activity A is completed. So activity A is finished at event 2. So from event 2, we can draw the activity B. And B is ended at event 3. Next, the activity C, which has the same predecessor activity that is A. That means it will again start from the event 2. So this is activity C and it will end at event 4. And next, activity D, it has the predecessor activity of B. It will end, let's say, at 5. Next activity E, which has the predecessor activities of C and D. That means both the activity C and D must be completed before the activity E can start. So activity C ends at event 4 and activity D ends at event 5. So we have to join the two events using dummy activity. Dummy activities are represented using dotted arrow lines. So both the activities ended at event 5 and from here we can draw the activity E. Next activity is F which has same predecessor activities couple that is C and D. So it will also start from the event 5. And it will end at event 7. Next is G, which has the predecessor activity of E. So it will start from event 6. And will end at, let's say, 8. And our final activity is activity H, which will start from event 8. And we'll end at event 9. So our starting event is event 1 and our ending event is event 9. But here you can see the activity A is finished before 
the actual project or the actual network is finished which is an error this error is called dangling that is d-a-n-g-l-i-n-g dangling refers finishing an activity before the actual project is finished or completed so we have to connect it to the final event using a dummy activity this completes our network diagram so this is our initial network diagram but there is a scope of optimization. As you can see, instead of joining event 4 and event 5 using a dummy activity, see in this diagram, if you draw the activity D directly to event 4, you can save a dummy activity. You will also save an event number. So your network will end at event 8 instead of event 9. So that will make the network more robust and easy to read. So the best practice is while considering an activity or drawing just look next two or three activities and consider whether the activity you are going to draw whether or not the predecessor activity for any upcoming activity. Simplifying this while drawing the activity D just look two more activities forward and see the activity D is the predecessor activity for activity E. So when you see something like this then you will try to match that particular activity to that activity which is given in the pair. So while drawing the activity D, if you look forward you will see it is paired with activity C. So you will try to match them together. So if you can match them together, you will save an event and a dummy activity. This is the best practice while drawing the network diagram. So if you follow this procedure, not only you can draw the perfect network at one shot but also you can save time during your exams. So by removing this dummy activity and connecting the activity D at this point, you can make the diagram more compact and can save an event. I hope I was able to make you understand the concept. If you are still confused then please watch my previous video that is network optimization using dummy activity part 1 that will help to clear your doubts. So this was for now. How was the video? Let me know in the comments below. I will upload more videos in the series. So don't forget to subscribe to YouTube channel so that when I upload my next video, you get an email if you subscribe. And please like and share the video among your friends and family because knowledge is meant to be shared. So thanks for watching. See you in my next video. And still then, stay connected by subscribing.